r slash ask men. Hey it's Zach says. Why do, or don't, you share locations with your significant other? My partner and I both have fairly active work or hobbies, her as a traveling safety officer, and I'm frequently at bars slash music venues playing. I feel like sharing locations is pretty normal, and has been done in all of my past relationships purely for safety and convenience. She believes that it violates trust, and that I should just ask where she is slash when she's coming home, but it's hard, when we text so infrequently throughout the day and sometimes not all. What are your opinions? Scrap Draft says. My wife and I share with each other. I ride a motorcycle. I can't text while riding, so it's an easy way for her to see that I'm still moving and not in a ditch somewhere. She flies and travels for work a lot. It's easy for me to make sure she's getting to the airport slash hotel slash etc without having to bother her. Intrepid Lettuce 694 says. My husband's first motorcycle accident is when we started sharing location. Tradit 3 says. My girlfriend and I share locations and have a perfectly healthy relationship. We never asked one another to share, but I had vocalized that sometimes I struggle with negative thoughts and anxiety due to trust issues I developed unrelated to her. Immediately after I told her that, unprompted, she shared her location with me. Then I shared mine back, just because it seemed like the right thing to do. Honestly, I love it. It has helped a lot. When she's out and about, I know exactly where she is, and that she's safe. Or if I want to surprise her, and she's away from the house, I can check to see where she is, and know exactly how much time I have until she's home. Plus it makes her feel safer knowing, that should something go wrong I'll be able to find her, and I like that as well. I think it's highly dependent on you, and your partner and your motivations for doing it. If you're in a toxic relationship it could very easily become a problem. But if you're not, there's nothing inherently toxic or problematic with having someone's location. I have some of my friends locations as well. It's a big convenience. Principia Mest says. We don't. Not much point in it. Just another Scott says. Yeah I can't imagine. Being in a relationship where your partner watches you 24 over 7. Everyone has a cell phone, and can be reached at any point for any reason. No need to track their every move. Davidav63 says. We do it for convenience and safety. I don't care where she goes, but if I can't get hold of her, it's nice to see she's not stranded on the side of the road. We just spent a month in Europe. Instead of trying to give directions or an address, she can just come to my location. We don't have jealousy issues or anything to hide, so it works for us. I would never question why she was somewhere, because she is a grown woman and can go where she wants. Probable alarm comment says. I don't deliberately avoid this, but it's never been necessary for me. I would do this if I was going into a dangerous or remote area, especially if it didn't have reliable cell communication. If you're tracking your s slash o while they're out and about on a daily basis, you have a serious problem. Keyson says. Me and my partner share locations. He mainly uses to see how far away from home I'm after work, so he can have a hot cup awaiting for me. I mainly use it to see when he's likely to be home as it's different every day and he can't text to tell me. Jumpy figure 4082 says. I agree with your partner. I want a little mystery and independence in my life, I want something to be able to talk about, and being able to see someone's location clips that. Also the whole trust aspect is important to me. I can see if there are times when we choose to share locations but would hate it as the default. Prekar says. I did it with an ex and honestly, it just turned into feeling super unhealthy. Dia 6 low says. I don't see a problem with it, it's not like, when my wife isn't home that's all I'm doing, is obsessively looking at her location, it's more of a safety precaution and something that's only used when needed. 
I feel it's only unhealthy, if you're an unhealthy abusive person or insecure. Mop Jockey says. I think it's quite unhealthy to want to track each other all the time. R slash ask men. Can I rest please says. What are some ways to make a man, who has abusive critical parents, feel loved and confident? Hi everybody, I need some help on how to make my BF feel loved and confident. I apologize for any typus. My boyfriend and I have been dating for some time and I absolutely love him. He is such a caring loving responsible funny and smart man. Unfortunately, he has overly religious narcissistic parents who isolated him his entire life, home shoulded him to make sure he had the right priorities, brainwashed him into some cult, cut him off from his sisters, because he is their do-over baby, and most importantly, constantly criticize him. Whatever he does, his parents say he can't succeed, and that he is already failing. He can't show any interest in anything other than studies and work, because they will berate him, and he needs to constantly be soft spoken, because of some weird Mormon crap his parents are into. They constantly humiliate him, even when I'm there as well, especially emasculating him. They both make slight comments, that I'm also just an obstacle to his success because love, should wait until you're fully stable in your life and sometimes make remarks that imply. I'm going to cheat on him. For context, my boyfriend was cheated on before Barnex and the girl told him about it nonchalantly, like it was nothing. So his parents really hurt him, when they say I'm going to cheat on him, and I can see, that it hurts his feelings and confidence, and makes him think he must not be smart slash handsome slash good enough then. Because of those comments. He also has a huge imposter syndrome that hurts his confidence so much. I have tried in, so many ways to make feel him loved and confident, but he just keeps repeating, that my attempts to show him love, makes it hurt even more cause he feels so undeserving of it, or he feels, like I'm faking it, and soon I will make fun of him like his parents. So I ask men of Reddit to offer me some advice on making the man of my dreams understand, that he is indeed the man of my dreams, and that he deserves all the love in the world, even if his parents don't give him love. Bunai High Sleepy says. Show consistent love and support, reassure him that you value him for who he is, not just his achievements. Encourage him to open up about his feelings without judgment, and help him build self-worth, by celebrating his strengths and small victories. Most importantly, be patient as healing from such deep emotional wounds takes time. Efficient Log 8009 says by not being abusive and critical like his parents. Warmger8832 says. Nurture, nurture, nurture send heart energies, give him a soft blanket, let him cry, buy him candles, write him poetry, give him a big hug, kind words, etc. Nothing beats warmth, when you're surrounded by cold. Professional Row 605 says. How nearly you can't. If they have done this his whole life then he needs to talk to a professional. You can be supportive and kind but this will feel foreign and scary or foreign and boring. He will need to rebuild himself and find himself. Eroy49 says. You sound like a gem of a person and very sweet. I hate to say this, but here is the reality. Shitty, manipulative parents exert far greater influence on your BF than you do. Your efforts to make him see or believe in himself will not be enough. He will struggle with this for years. What he needs most is professional help, therapy, and space slash time away from his toxic family. I'm very sorry, I know you want to help, but you will just get dragged into his drama, and get pulled under yourself. Many years ago I was a BF trying to fix my broken, sweet GF, this is how I know. But I will be different, I can overcome this, you may be saying in your head. Again, I'm sorry but only he can do this for himself. Metalgesus0909 says. Your heart's definitely in the right place, it takes a lot to continue, putting effort into a person that needs this much assurance. 
stuff like this isn't going to just go away, but don't think you can't make a big difference in his growth. The big thing I recommend is focusing on consistency. Obviously times will come when he gets down in the dumps and you'll try especially hard to be there for him, but realize that your words and actions in your day to day can make a big impact on him as well. Just some basic words of encouragement over anything really, as long as it's genuine. Tell him when he does something well, or times when you're appreciative of him. Stuff like that will hopefully help him build up confidence and a feeling that you're genuinely appreciative of him. Therapy also wouldn't be a bad idea as others have mentioned. Tyverus says. Just randomly look at him and flirt. Wink, growl, whatever. Just show in a direct manner you think he's real neat and you like him. Goldedord says. First of all, it's clear that you care deeply for your boyfriend, and that's a beautiful thing. It's heartbreaking to hear about the toxic environment he's been raised in, but your support is invaluable in helping him navigate that. One way to help him feel loved and confident is to consistently affirm his strengths and qualities, not just in words, but through actions that show your belief in him. For instance, celebrate his achievements, no matter how small, and make a point of acknowledging his efforts. When he doubts himself, gently remind him of times when he succeeded despite the odds. It might also be helpful to create a safe space where he can express himself without fear of judgment. Encourage him to pursue hobbies or interests that bring him joy, even if his parents disapprove. Being his biggest cheerleader in these moments can reinforce the idea that he's worthy of love and happiness. Lastly, patience is key. Overcoming years of emotional abuse isn't easy, and it'll take time for him to fully believe in the love you offer. Keep showing up for him, even on the days when he's struggling to believe it himself. Your consistent love and support can slowly help him rewrite the narrative his parents have ingrained in him. Stay strong. And know that what you're doing is making a difference, even if he can't always see it right now. Ancient Object 578 says. It is a slow process. Just be warm and send messages that you appreciate him and things like that. It takes time to get used to warmth when you had cold all the time, slash. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.